so it seems to me that this multiverse idea is one you are virtually driven to if you are an atheist. And uh, Hawking certainly goes for it. But the idea is fraught with problems. First, the physics of multiverses is highly speculative. You wouldn't gain the impression from the Hawking and Melodinoff book that M theory had indeed made no predictions and there, were no, there was no observational or experimental support for it. It's highly speculative and indeed uh, other universes than our own are unobservable in principle. Usually the idea is that there are infinitely many universes. Well that very idea has certain problems associated with it. You cannot complete an infinity, you can always add to an infinity. So there can be no guarantee that all possibilities are covered even if you have an infinite number of universes. There are paradoxes to do with human identity. This very room will be mimicked in um, uh, many, many other universes, possibly infinitely many universes, once you go into this realm of a multiverse. And uh, so it seems to me that uh, you're ending up with uh, a, 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 a hypothesis which is um, perhaps giving rise to paradox. It's not a simple hypothesis and scientists usually choose the simplest of competing hypotheses to explain any phenomenon. According to the principle of Occam's razor, one should not multiply entities unnecessarily and the multiverse idea does that to the most extravagant degree. There is always the question to why this multiverse? In fact, what you've done is simply push the question back from why this universe is so special as to the why the multiverse is so special. There's a potential lack of predictability if we're in a multiverse uh, because there are far more disordered universes than ordered ones. And so why doesn't everything collapse into chaos uh, within the next uh, second or two? Perhaps the closest a multiverse explanation gets is to explaining the particular value, why the cosmological constant is so small. Because only if it is so small within quite a narrow range could galaxies and stars form. Even though the theoretical value of that constant is 10 to the 120 power times bigger than that which is compatible with observation. But on the other hand, some kind of fine tuning seems necessary in order to get an infinite universe in the first place, because mostly we're thinking about a multiverse being a gigantic overarching space-time in which the universes aren't really separate universes, but they're disconnected parts of this overarching space-time. Um, and you need the, the, the critical density over, of this whole um, vast overarching space-time to be lower than uh, the actual density of this to be lower than a, than, a, than a certain critical value. Well, there's a big problem about the way the universe started, how highly ordered it was back at the beginning. There's a very strong argument of Roger Penrose to do with that. Um, and yet, um, what we would expect if we were in a multiverse would be not to be in a universe which is as ordered and structured to this day, out as far as we can see to the furthest galaxy, but merely to exist in a, in a solar system which is just about ordered enough to it for us to exist, but that surrounded by chaos. Um, so uh, th th that seems a certain incompatibility with the idea of multiverses, the idea that we are in a highly ordered universe. Um, okay, so there are multiple problems with that idea. Again, you, you wouldn't get that impression from the Hawking and Melodinoff book. And not only does the universe create itself, but uh, through M theory and gravity, uh, a great many universes are created out of nothing. And as Professor Lane Craig has very well explained, uh, this isn't really creation out of what a philosopher would call nothing. So it seems to me that it's far simpler, uh, far more rational to believe that the universe was created and designed by God than it is to invoke the enormously extravagant and speculative hypothesis of the multiverse.